Morning, everyone. Will we stand and get ready? Do you know, I had a thought this morning. It's great to be able to come to church, isn't it? Yes. And I see some people that we haven't seen in a long time. So wave across at somebody and say, it's good to see you. Nah. It's really, really good to be here. <laughs> and as the scripture came to me from Psalms, uh, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Mm. The righteous run into it and they are saved. And we are safe. And this is a good place to be. Mm. So praise God. So let's pray before we praise the Lord. So Father, we thank you that you're a safe place today. That you're a strong tower for us, Lord. And we run into you today, Father, in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Lord, that you're... I thank you, Abba, Father, that your steadfast love never, ever, ever fails us. Your mercies are new every morning and you are faithful always to us. And because of that, Lord, we come to praise you with thankful hearts this morning and we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. worship you in spirit and in truth, Lord. We sing a love song to you. We sing a love song to you. We sing a love song to you. Jesus. Let my life be a love song. Every day sing to you. May my life always please you as a sweet offering. I am satisfied in you. Come be glorified in me. All of my my Savior, my King, and my friend. Yeah. All of my life I will lay down yeah. to love you in all that I, all my life. All of my life you've been faithful. My Savior, my King, and my friend. All of my life. All sweet offering I am satisfied come be glorified come be glorified in me help me worship God oh, all of my life you've been faithful yeah. my Savior my King and my all my life Jesus all of my
Surrender fresh to him. That he would have us surrender our thoughts to him. That he would have us surrender our opinions. our own opinions on things, people, different things. He would have us surrender our tongue to him. He will have us surrender these areas afresh to him. Particularly, the scripture that's come into mind says only by pride comes contention anytime there's contention and argument and strife according to the scripture there's pride there and there's every evil way and confusion and it opens the door to the enemy every evil thing is there and so the Lord will have us surrender your pride surrender your pride to me that thing that causes you to get into an argument so easily that thing that gets you into strife at a drop of a hat the Lord says surrender it to me surrender it to me surrender it to me sing this song surrender in response to the Lord you. you're holding on to offense you're holding on to anger surrender to me I'm giving you my and all there is within Lay it all down 
For the sake of you, my King, I'm giving you my dreams, laying down my rights, giving up my pride for the promise of new life. And I. these things are sin and they're not going to stop you from entering into heaven but they will stop you from being used by the Lord and they will hinder your relationship with God you see God never changes he will still use you in spite of your sin in spite of where you are but these things they hinder our lives they hinder our walk with God. So if that's you, confess that to the Lord. That hardness in your heart. Let it go, let it go, let it go. That bitterness, let it go, let it go. Unforgiveness, let it go to Jesus. Let it go. Oh, that pride. The Lord says, let it go. That strife. Let it go. Mm. The Lord says, a contrite and a broken spirit, I will not despise. Mm. And I surrender. And I surrender all to
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Scripture says that God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Amen. He gives grace to the humble. And you know how much we need the grace of God. We need God's grace every single day of our lives. You know, we were, I was reading this morning in Ephesians 2 8, for by grace you have been saved. Do you know, initially when we came into the kingdom, we were saved by the grace of God. But you know what? Every trial we face and every mountain and every difficulty is the grace of God that's going to bring us through. There's a verse in, in Zechariah. 4 6 it says you know not by might nor by power but by my spirit says the lord and it says they'll bring back the capstone with shouts of grace grace to it in other words we did this by the grace of god i don't know about you but i feel today where i've come in my journey i am here by the grace of god today and you are here by the grace of god and where you'll be in five years time or one year time or ten years time you will only get there by the grace of God because if it wasn't for the grace of God if the grace of God was to leave us right now and he was to withdraw we wouldn't be able to follow him we wouldn't be able to walk with him we wouldn't be able to worship him so it's only his grace upon us it's by grace that we are saved and Lord, I thank you now. I believe God wants to pour out his grace afresh into our lives this morning. I sense that word in Romans that says we have access by, by grace. In, we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand. So we don't just stand in it. We have access by faith into the grace to receive more grace. Amen. Do you need more grace? Yes. Just reach out to the Lord now. Father, we thank you for more grace. As you said, the Lord gives more grace. Yes, Lord. We thank you now for an outpouring of grace in our lives, Lord. Lord, we want to thank you. Just begin to thank God for where you are today is because of his grace. Lord, we thank you that where we are individually and as a church, as a congregation, as KCC, Lord, how this church started 34 years ago, Lord. And you have brought it this far. And we acknowledge that it's by your grace that we have come this far, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. We receive it, Lord. Hallelujah. Receiving the grace. <laughs> Hallelujah. We receive your grace, Lord. We receive your abundant grace into our hearts, into our lives. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, Radalata Masata la Caria Bosoto. Elaboro Comatala Barata la Masita la Cara de Siti Ete. Oh, Receta Boro Masata la Keshete Borondo. Receive your grace, Lord. To bring us forward, Lord. We receive your abundant grace, Lord. That, Lord, your grace is sufficient for us. Your grace is sufficient for us, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It's great to have our speaker this morning, um, David Harper. David has been in the church probably over a year, maybe two years, but with all the COVID going on. But... Um, he, it's his first time to preach here in KCC, so let's give him a real big warm welcome. Um, he's, got, he's got plenty of experience. He leads, a, he leads his own group in his house every week, and um, he's had a group in the clubhouse a number of years ago. So bless you, Dave. May the Lord bless you, and you're among family. Amen? <laughs> Amen. Wow, what a wonderful time this morning. 
So blessed to be here. <clears throat> okay, so we're um, we're uh, continuing with the theme of uh, moving from spiritual orphan to spiritual son. It's this transition, okay? So you might have got that handout sheet a couple of weeks ago, and it's it's worth having a look down through it because when I look down through it, there's so much in there, you know. Um, and praise God, there's progress, you know, in the Christian walk in life. Uh, so today we're going to be looking at the issue of security. And this is very, very important for us, okay? So moving from the, that place of insecurity um, to the place of peace, and that's where God would have us be, okay? He wants us there with him because he is our peace. I love the way Paul starts his letters, I think all of them, his letters to the churches with grace and peace be with you from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's not just saying it, that is an impartation of grace. It's supernatural. And I think any time you read the scriptures, receive that. Any time we meet together like this, through the music, through the talking, receive it. When you meet together as individuals, you know, believers, one another, you're, you're giving grace to one another. God's, it's flowing, it's flowing through you. Praise God. He builds us up and up, doesn't he? <clears throat> but we need to be able to receive this grace, okay? If you want that peace. And it's good to really, really want it, to really strongly desire it and go after it, okay? For me, my, for me personally, it's, essential, it's vital, it's so important that I have God's peace, Amen. you know. And um, <clears throat> you need to trust God for this because the peace he gives, it's rightfully ours, okay? Mm -hmm. That's why you, you can go after it to get it because it's rightfully yours. As a son, as a child of God, this peace is right, rightfully yours. Okay, um, and then the moment you believe you have that, it's actually in there. It doesn't go away. Mm -hmm. God will never leave us. His promise is true. So we, we, we just need to be able to access it. It's there. Okay. And we need it for all aspects of life. Relationships, you know, our mental, our physical health. You know, you can, you can, you can apply it to everything. So God's, God's peace is a secure place, okay? Um, it's foundational. It's like a building. Mary prayed at the beginning, you know, it's like a strong tower. And the righteous go into it and they're saved. And you think of St. Canis' tower. That was built at a time when if the attack, say the Vikings were coming, you know, and the guys got words, well, they went into the tower and the door's up high and then they pulled up the ladder and waited till the Vikings got fed up and went back home. I don't know, I don't actually know what happened, but they, need, you know, they needed some kind of protection. Um, so the secure place God would have us be, it's, we find our home there, okay? And we feel safe there, okay? And you can actually rest. Um, I'm going to read a few verses from Matthew 7 and 24. <clears throat> Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against the house, yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine does not put them into practice, is like a foolish man, built his house on the sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew, beat against the house, and it fell with a great crash, okay? And I hope that doesn't happen to any of you. Again, Jesus made it very easy, you know. Just believe me, put my words into practice. It works. Um, and it must be awful for your house to fall down. You know, actually, in Ireland today, there's, there's people who had, like, faulty uh, cement in, mixed in the concrete, and, and now it's, like, it's disintegrating, and it's, it's an awful thing, you know. Um, 
but it's a good parable. It's one, it's one that I, I remember really well from <coughs> childhood, you know, from Sunday school. A story like that is told over and over again, and you have this image, it's such a strong image of a house standing strong in the storm, and the other one, you know, the, even the foundations going and the whole thing falling apart. Um, okay, and we need to remember that trouble will come, okay? That's just reality. Jesus said, uh, John 16, 33, he said, in this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Okay? And we were singing that in the song. We're, we're overcomers in him. Okay? We, can, we can actually rise above it. But it doesn't mean you, God's peace doesn't mean you won't have trouble in, in, in life. You know, whether you're a, an unbeliever or a believer, you're in the same world, there's going to be trouble here. It's chaos all around, isn't it? and darkness. We're dealing with this all the time. You know, I mean, all of the problems in life, you know, experiencing loss and death, you know, relationship breakups, betrayal from friends, uh, financial worries, you know, the list goes on and on. Um, but praise God, we're, we're, we're here to be overcome. As he, you know, he has us where we're at. Um, so we've got to fight the good fight. Okay, we're fighting, what, against <clears throat> our own sinful nature. Okay, so you need self-control. It's one of the fruits of the Spirit. Um, and recently it's become very important to me. You know, this this um, idea of self-control. Um, because we've, we've lies and deceptions coming against us, okay. You know, there's powers out there and they're, they're feeding... They're trying to get in, you know, lies. Don't believe them. Weigh everything up against God's word, okay? Um, it's okay to have doubts, okay? But don't let it turn into unbelief. That's the worst place you can go with it, okay? You, you'll have questions about things. You'll, not, you'll have misunderstandings about things. That's okay. It's part of being human. But go after God until he, he, he tells you the truth and sets you free. Um, we know as well that the devil goes about like a roaring lion, um, seeking whom he can devour. Okay, so he's opportunistic. So like Jesus said, get in the strong place. Don't be in the weak place, because the devil's cruel. He kicks you when you're down. We've all experienced that, okay? Uh, in John 10, 10, um, Jesus said, you know, the thief has come to steal, to kill, to destroy, but I have come that you might have life, and life to the full. Okay? So if you're not living life to the full, something's wrong. <laughs> now Jesus says these things, but he totally relates to our position, okay? He was tempted in every way like us, okay? So he, he's total empathy with how it is for us here, okay? He knows, he knows it's difficult. You know, as a human being, he experienced everything that we experience. Um, he was wise to the devil's tactics, okay? There was a spiritual conflict there as well, but he, he was wise. He knew what to do. He knew what to say. Okay, so <clears throat> how do we get ourselves strong? We need protection. Um, there's uh, some verses here in Ephesians talking about the armor of God. Uh, I'll read those now. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armour of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you've done everything, to stand. Stand firm then, with the belt of truth, buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation 
and the sword of the Spirit, which is of the Word of God. That's wonderful instruction, isn't it? But see the way he says it. He says, put it on. Okay? So who puts it on? You do. Okay, just, just take that responsibility and put it on. Um, and be protected. You know, um, Paul also talks, talks about putting on the new nature, which is Christ-likeness. Remember that Jesus is perfect in every way, and we, we want to be like that. Okay? But we, he's given us that new nature. And we can, we can, we can put it on. And, and, and again, put off the old nature, because it's corruptible. You start acting out of the old self, it's, it's a disaster. You know? um, now the good news is, Andy touched on it already, we can receive more grace. Okay. I believe God's grace is unlimited. And whatever we can receive from him, it's sufficient to meet our needs. Okay. Um, yeah, those verses from James 4. Um, but he gives us more grace. That's why scripture says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil, he will flee from you. Come near to God and he will come near to you. You know, wash your hands, you sinners, purify your hearts. You double-minded. Let's not be double-minded. God is good. Um, he's even better than you think he is. So we must go after God for this, okay? For the more, don't, don't settle for less. It's the worst thing you can do. Don't think, oh, this is, this is my lot, this is, you know, no. Love is pursuant. Love by nature goes after, okay? When, when a couple fall in love, they go after one another, okay? And uh, actually, that's not supposed to end. Okay, so we're, we're, we're in this love relationship with God. Now, he's gone after us to the fullest extent. He's proven his love to us through Jesus Christ, laying down his life for us. Um, but his spirit is active in, 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 the, in the love towards us, okay? But we... In loving God back, we can go after Him. So you'll notice from, from that verse actually, um, a person who's insecure, there's pride there, okay? And a secure person, a person who's, you know, got that, that depth of security, um, that's a humble position. Okay, so we can repent of trusting in our own uh, judgments on things, our own understanding of things. And repent doesn't mean trying really hard to do the right thing or trying really hard not to sin. It's not like that at all. It just means simply turn to God and face Him. He does it. His grace will flow. He'll show you the way. He'll straighten you up on the matter. Um, so desire to get God's mind and his word on a matter, okay? Um, we get that through, through Bible knowledge, yes, like reading, reading, reading of the scriptures, that's really good. But also a spiritual sensitivity. Um, be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, he's our, he's our teacher. And the word comes fresh. And his mercies are new every morning, he's, he's fresh every day, all the time, okay? Praise God. Um, there's, a, there's a lovely verse in uh, Proverbs <clears throat> chapter 3 and it goes you know, trust in the Lord with all your heart um, lean not on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight okay. and Jesus said no, narrow is the way that leads to life um, only, a, only a few people find it go after it, find it be, be on that way and he said I am the way He's, he's, you know, he's presented himself to us in the fullness, the fullness of the glory of God. You know, the, the, the thing with the orphan, do, he doesn't know his own identity, okay? Yeah. Um, and it's so important for us to actually know our parents, where we come from. Um, if you've ever seen those... <coughs> 
those TV shows where you know there's like a long lost family and, and either their siblings have been separated from birth or children from their parents and then to get an investigation team to go and you know reconcile to make get the two to meet and it's such a a special moment it's such a and there's such an emotional weight to it as well but it's so important for people for all of us to know um, where we come from so when we're adopted as children of God we have a new identity okay so even if it's not your you know, biological family you're, in a, you're a member of a new spiritual family which is eternal and uh the good news is we now have a perfect parent, okay? Mm -hmm. So our, our earthly parents, our biological parents, they, and they, they do their best for us, you know? And, um, but like I, am, I know I'm not a perfect father for my children, but I want them to know God the Father. I want to point to his perfection. Yes, I have a duty of care to represent him to them, um, but that'll only be in part. I want them to know God as their perfect parent. Um, and you know, children are supposed to be like their parents, aren't they? Jesus said, uh, this is Matthew 5, 48, be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Uh, no pressure to be perfect. Yeah. Um, but he wouldn't have said that if it wasn't possible, okay? So we know with, with the things of God, like with man, it's completely impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Um, so we need to get to a place where we have a God confidence. That's where the security and the peace is inside us. And I mean having a God confidence as opposed to having a self-confidence, okay? So when I was younger, I used to... Um, because um, I, I suffer kind of a low confidence, I was kind of a shy person, and I looked up to people who were you know, really self-confident, going, wow, that's great, you know. But as you get older, and you get to, you know, to know things, um, you realize like, they're just as much as, as a disaster as I am. You know, self-confidence comes to nothing, really. Like, you know, Paul said, puts no confidence in the flesh. None at, none at all, okay? Um, <clears throat> we had that verse a few weeks ago where at Jesus' baptism God the Father says this is my son, he says over Jesus this is my son with whom I am well pleased now he says that same thing over us okay. believers this is the good news of the gospel so we have his favour we have his unconditional love And love never fails. God can't let you down. So we know now we don't have to work for his favor, okay? Which would be like perfectionism, which is cruel. You know, trying to, trying to earn God's favor. No, but you can walk in his favor, but you have to do it. You know, it is, it is actually good news, and it says the whole way through the scripture from right back in Genesis, the righteous will live by faith. And Jesus has gone before us. He's our elder brother, the firstborn amongst many. Like, what a wonderful family. It, it couldn't be any better, you know. So we are, we are sons of God not sinners. We've got a new identity and a new standing, okay? Um, and people like to say, it's commonly said in church that, you know, oh, we are sinners. But that, you read, read, read the Bible, that, that's past tense. That's what you once were, okay? It's not our new identity. Of course you can do things wrong, you know? But it's not your identity. Your identity is a son of God. And that actually empowers you to do things better, to do the right thing, knowing that, okay. Um, and anyway, only perfection can enter into heaven. Everything there is perfect. Every, everybody there is perfect. 
That's, that's kingdom rule. So God has made that way. He's made this possible. Um, so while we're here, we need to work out our salvation. We need to know what we've got um, in order to progress. So we need to be teachable. We need to be willing to change the way we think. Okay, that's all part of humility. Um, so we can increase in our knowledge of God. Now, knowledge of God is not just, you know, reading and memorizing and learning. and uh, That's part of it. But we need to experience God. Now go after him and he'll meet you there. Okay. Go after him with all your heart. If you've not experienced God in a special way, in a profound way, go after him. Because you'll know him now. And we desire perfect unity as well, don't we? <clears throat> Not only with God, but also with one another. So our goals in life, well, our goal is God himself, actually. That's where we're going. That's where we're headed to. Our home is in him. So while we're here on the earth, um, let's move towards spiritual maturity. Okay? Don't, set, don't settle for less. Don't, don't stay in the infant stage. Um, keep moving on up because we need to be empowered to help others. Okay. This is not just a self-help thing. God's grace, he wants his grace to flow through us to others to, to be able to help them. Okay. <clears throat> in one of the uh, Beatitudes um, in Matthew chapter 5, Jesus said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the sons of God. So a son of God has got work to do. You can't give away what you don't have, okay? So if you've got God's peace within you, you have it to give. Um, so making peace is an assertive thing, okay? Making the peace as opposed to keeping the peace, okay? Some people have a, a false sense of what peace is like, say, in, in the home or whatever. Um, keeping the peace can be like the passive or the aggressive behavior, yeah. you know? And that's never good. So first, we must be reconciled to God, okay? Because everything good we have to give is from him anyway, to start with. And then be reconciled to one another. Um, let's go for healthy relationships. Love relationships. Um, you know, making peace at home is important. And you, there will be challenges. The things are going to rise up. And... Um, but blessed are the peacemakers. Go for it. You know, that's so important in a marriage. Um, but yet, marriages break, break down, don't they? Things go wrong and people don't seem to be able to get it right. But a Christian couple must never see each other as the enemy. They've lost sight of it, okay? Your, enemy, your enemy's common, your enemy's spiritual, okay? But you both must acknowledge to one another, you have a common goal, which is God himself. That's where the unity is, okay? So get the right perspective on things when, when trouble arises, okay? And that will change your behavior. Change your attitude on your behavior. <clears throat> um, I was listening to teaching actually on marriage by, by Jimmy Evans one time and he, he listed the needs of men and the needs of women and they're pretty much the same but they're in a kind of a different order, okay? So the needs of men and women are in, in a different order. And at the top of the list for women um, is the need for security. Um, and God actually meets that need through her husband, you know. That's the way it's meant to be. So the reason I'm saying that because of the church in, as the feminine, as the bride of Christ, okay? So it's so important for us, all of us, as members of that body, to be secure. And God provides that for us, okay? Um, <clears throat> if you've ever seen <laughs> reality TV shows, it's often what kind of what makes the drama, but you'll see that insecure people or people act in an insecure way are very difficult to be with, very difficult to live with, okay? People who are selfish and take offense easily. You know, and this word narcissism is used a lot today, you know? 
It's like everyone's a narcissist, you know. If you look in the mirror, you're a narcissist, you know. Um, but it's not, it's not really great to label people like that, you know. That's just the sinful nature. That's, we're all like that. that. You know, it's common to all. But we need to be channels of God's peace, okay? Like that, the song, um, I think it's the prayer of St. Francis, and make me a channel of your peace. Okay, so we've got a responsibility here. And I do believe the church would function better um, as its members grow in the new identity. Keep growing. Don't hold back, don't settle for less. Let's become more secure. Let's become more loving. Just put this power in it. You know, there's oneness in the kingdom. That's a heaven reality. Do you ever think about that? Because it's kind of disappointing when you look at the church and we're all divided this way and there's these traditions and those traditions and they can't talk to them. And, but actually in the spirit, all believers are one. That's one. And I think we should start seeing each other that way. Um, you'd be familiar with um, Jesus' prayer in John chapter 17. And I'll just read a few verses from that, 22. Um, So this is Jesus praying for us, right? I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me. May they be brought to complete unity to let the world know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am, and to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. Okay, so it's important for us to see others as God sees them. And that's actually the Father's heart. Children, are, again, are to be like their parents. So we're, we're to be like God the Father. Um, we represent God here, like Jesus did. He made us in his image and in his likeness from the beginning. And that's been restored, isn't it? This is a return to glory. We're on a journey, but it's the return to glory. And it's been God's plan from the beginning. Praise God. And this oneness of the body, okay, it might be invisible, it's a spiritual thing. Um, but you can see it by faith. You can see it by faith. So allow your desires to line up with God's desires. Because they're pure. They're holy. And God is love, so keep on loving. <coughs> You know, may God teach us his ways. And we have the anointing to teach us. He's given, his Holy Spirit is upon us, it's within us and upon us. You know, the Holy Spirit is a kingdom deposit. You know, and the disciples asked Jesus, well, where is the kingdom? He says, within you. It's been deposited inside you. And it's a guarantee of what is to come. So we have so much to look forward to, don't we? I'm just going to finish with a verse. Um, it's at the end of uh, Second Corinthians. There we go. Finally, brothers, goodbye. Aim for perfection. Listen to my appeal. 
be of one mind and live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thanks, Dave. Praise God. I can hear myself breathing. <laughs> it is peace so important, isn't it? God's peace. I like that analogy at the start. It's like entering into Candace's tower. And that safe place, as Mary said, uh, his name is the strong tower. So we can head in there. You know, uh, he's given us peace, but sometimes we fall out of peace, don't we? But as easy as we fall out, we can fall back in. We can fall back into peace with our spouses, with our children, with our employers, with our employees. <laughs> Amen. So we're just going to have a little bit of worship and maybe you just need to receive that peace from the Lord. Jesus said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Amen. So Lord, we just thank you today, Lord, for that amazing provision of your peace. Lord, that you've provided peace for us as your children. That we can enter into a place of peace and enter, enter into a place of rest in you, Lord. And Jesus, we just bless you now. I pray that for every single person this morning. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be upon you. The shalom of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Perhaps you need to do business with the Lord. I encourage you to close your eyes. Just ward off distraction. That's all that is. Lord, you give grace to the humble. Meaning if we stay stubborn where we are, that grace is not going to reach us. And it's not because God is not giving it. Because it's because of our pride and stubbornness stopping the flow of that peace from us experiencing it. You know, as in a scripture Dave, David wrote out, read out about. You know, we have to hold on to our peace. There are many things that will steal that from you. Even as you go out today, as you step out the door, there's something right there to steal it from you but you don't you don't have to allow it to steal it from you you can hold on to it you have your anointing Lord teach us how to hold on to our peace and be peacemakers When peace like a river, it is well with my soul. When peace like a river attend my way. When so Billows roll What if 
soul is. It is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. No Satan should buff at no trials should come. Let this bless the sure come
Amen. Amen. Have a fantastic week. I just want to pray this over us from Second Peter. He said, To those who have obtained like precious faith by the righteousness of our, Lord, of our God and Savior Jesus Christ. And he said, Grace and peace be multiplied to you. Amen. Anyone want that? A multiplication? Grace and peace be multiplied to you. And I declare that and we ask for it, Father. Grace and and peace will be multiplied to us yes, in the knowledge of God and of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Have a fantastic week. Amen.